Hi, today I'd like to talk about integrating Central Station CRM with the newsletter provider newsletter to go Why is it useful to integrate both systems? It's kind of obvious because people you already have in your CRM software are the people you might want to contact using a newsletter and stuff like that. So having an integration makes it a lot easier for you because you don't need to deal with exporting XLS files and importing all the stuff over and over again. That's why we built an integration with newsletter to go and I'd like to start and show how you set up this integration. Within your central station CRM, you first need to go to the account settings, which you will find behind this uh, on the top right. Uh, it's the third point and it's called account settings. If you don't see this link, you're lacking the, the necessary rights to access this area. Then you might need to talk to your boss because he might have the rights to do the setup process. With a click on it, you land in the account settings area and you'll find at the bottom right the other part and there are for example the external applications api uh, configuration configuration that you might want to do on this page you see that we currently don't have any api key in use and we are able to create a new one. So just by clicking on the green button, I get a new API key. What is this API key about? It's kind of like your email and password and it makes it easy and possible for news to go to access your central station CRM data. Unless you don't get, unless you give them the key, they can't access your data, obviously, and you don't want to give them your password in uh, clean text. So that's why you want to use this API key. So this is what we'll need later, and what we we need to deposit on the uh, new set go side. So first or second, it's uh, to set up this thing in new set go. So just uh, log into your new set go account and you then need to go to the settings area on the top right as well. So just click on it and go further to the plugins area. Here you're able to set up new connections and if you click on that you'll find some CRM connections that they offer and Central Station CRM is on the right. So just a click on it and you now need to deposit two things. First thing is the URL. So that's kind of where uh, user to go finds your data. And the API key is kind of the key to uh, lock it, to unlock, unlock it and to get access to your data. So let's get back to Central Station. And if you click in the browser on the top, you'll find the location that I just talked about. It's HTTPS including the account name, which is demo, dot, uh, demo uh, en in this case, dot centralstationcrm.net. This might of course be different for your case. So just take it and copy it, go back to newsletter to go and paste it in here. And the API key is the thing we just created on the central station CRM site. So just go here and copy it as well, paste it in here. And that's kind of mostly already it. You now maybe want to test if the integration is working. That's just the case in here. And the next thing we can do is to do some more setup. That's by clicking on the recipient synchronization uh, link here, where you will land on the plugin settings page. The first option is to have a sync every 24 hours, which is kind of helpful because you don't need to uh, manually do the sync over and over again. So that's kind of a good idea to have it clicked. And then user to go will do the sync uh, every night. So you are sure you already have the uh, up-to-date address book in your user to go account. Second option, is kind of what you want to import. Uh, standard is that just all 
people in your central station CRM will be imported uh, and added to the CS for central station group in Newsletter to go. That's if you just want to mail on a newsletter everyone in your central station CRM, which is probably not what you want to do. Um, therefore, you can just select what people or which people you'd like to sync to Newsletter to go. By clicking here, they open up a synchronizable recipient groups area where you can select what group you have in Central Station and how it should be imported in user to go So where we, what we find here is, for example, the uh, customer newsletter uh, group, which can be imported into the CS group at Newsletter to go or of course you can just uh, take this group, it's uh, not translated in here, just see. So you can just uh, select an existing group that you already have in Newsletter to go, or you can take the uh, Gruppe übernehmen, which is like uh, take this group and take the name. This is the customer newsletter group. And you might be wondering, where do I find this customer newsletter group? Where is, where is it from? That's easy, I can show you. Um, let's go back to Central Station and go to the Contacts uh, tab. If we just click some of the tags that we have, let's say the newsletter and the customer tag, and now we have like four people that might wanna get or might should get the newsletter that we are just preparing, then it might be helpful to just uh, sync these for people to newsletter to go. In order to do so, you just click the, the tag you want to have or even the location turnover stuff. So just anything you can filter, just click it together and then you'll find the option to save the filter and that's what you want to do. So just click on it, uh, give it a name, for example, the customer newsletter and then just save it. If you did that, you will find the filters that you saved always behind these three points to the right side, the great, great points to the right side. Just click on it and you will find the filters that you already saved. I already did it, so uh, it will be the customer newsletter. If I click on it, it will be loaded and it will already show the uh, text that you clicked when you just saved the uh, filter. And this filter, is uh, the thing you can use to sync the data to newsletter to go. So that's why we see the customer newsletter over here. So that's just uh, due to this fact. So this is kind of the people that we wanna, uh, wanna import. Of course, you can have multiple of these groups and just select where you wanna import them. Or if you don't want to import the others, you can just click on don't import and it will only be the customer newsletter people that will be imported. Up next is not who you want to import, but it's uh, what kind of data you want to import. The classic data you need for a newsletter is of course the uh, email address. That's why email address is already taken. So it will be imported into the email field at newsletter to go and also the first and last name or gender data that we provide is already uh, chosen but of, of course you have some more fields that you might want to use or or might not want to use for example we have these salutation fields that we automatically create in order to make it easier for you to uh, write newsletters and salutations so we can just select those it's failed your name in this case so also not translated i'm sorry for that um, these are three different salutations that we offer. Some are formal, some are um, official and some are informal. You'll see later what this is about and how they uh, look like. The other information we have here is for example, the uh, company uh, company name or the email of the pri private email, stuff like that. You can of course select any of these fields if you might wanna use them later. Um, mobile phone numbers, of course, might be interesting if you plan to do uh, phone or SMS marketing, which Newsletter also offers. Yeah, I think 
we can take the company name as well so and that might be fine for now um, we can now just save the settings and do the initial initial sync so just by clicking on recipient synchronization that of course might take a while if you have a large address book so to say for the, the four people that I selected it's of course pretty fast what we see now is that three people have been newly imported which is good but one person hasn't been imported which is kind of bad and we are just wondering why that might be the case um, let's just have a look into our contacts list and we'll see that we have email addresses for Frank for Hillary and for Elizabeth but we don't have any email for John and that's kind of the case because uh, doing newsletter email marketing without an email address is kind of uh, useless so it won't work that's why newsletter to go um, doesn't import this uh, person and marks it as invalid and not imported so just to inform you all people that are in this field in 99% of the case it's um, that they don't have an email address so just make sure you have it or don't wonder if the people are not imported next step is to just have a short look at the address book in new set to go where we see all people that we have in the newsletter address book we can just filter them for example by groups because we just edit a group I can how is it called the the last one is the customer newsletter which I just created I can just select it search for it and then I'll find the three people that I just imported those are the uh, last and first names, email address, gender, and that's already it. Ah, no, it's not it, uh, because we have some more data that we selected, which is the official, formal, and the informal salutation, and the company, of course. Um, and here you see the three salutations that we create by knowing or guessing, better said, better said the uh, gender, of your contacts. The informal one is kind of hey Frank or uh, the formal one is like hello and the official one is like dear and it of course would include titles. In case you have uh, contacts from different nationalities which we have in here, uh, Elizabeth is obviously a German and that's why she will receive a German salutation automatically because uh, we know she's a German show and might be, might be helpful to, uh, to salute her in a German salutation. Of course, you then would need to consider this sending your email because when you uh, select these salutations and send an English email, but uh, your salutation is uh, German, that's great, but kind of mixed then. So then it might, might be better to just send uh, the email in, a, in English in total or uh, maybe you do. Maybe you consider to have an uh, if-else statement for uh, German or for English uh, recipients. Yeah, but that's it. I mean, uh, you have these data all imported, and it will be synced from uh, night to night, and you then can create your newsletter simply by clicking on the newsletter and choosing the standard newsletter, which is kind of uh, newsletter go standard behavior standard stuff so yeah just click around and then you can select the recipients that you just imported from your sensor state central station i hope it was helpful and you get around finding these settings and setting everything up in case uh, you have questions just come back to us and we'll gladly assist bye bye